I, uh, I need a lot of help, because I just, I sweat when I breathe, man. Uh, okay, I don't know if you guys noticed the chair. I don't know how you couldn't notice it. Uh, this is the high chair, as we call it here on Spoilers. Pun intended. The, uh, the, you know, you watch a lot of talk shows, you always see a little couch and two chairs together and stuff like that. I don't like to sit, because then you see my gut. I like to stand. So I said, let's design a chair where I could stand and talk to the guests. And then we figured the guests we're talking to are so cool and whatnot. Give them something precious to put their epic asses on top of. <laughs> so tonight, uh, our throne here, the Hulu High Chair right here that you're looking at, it couldn't be reserved for a better person in the world. Flat out royalty is coming in here in a minute, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, she was a princess and still is and will always be in my heart. Uh, she's an author, man, a raconteur. She's a way better public speaker than I am. And hands down, this is the first woman I ever loved. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Carrie Fisher! like an Edith Ann thing going oh, on, man. That's right. No, I just don't like the heels. I, it's very adult, and I'm, you know, very short, and uh, that sort of makes me look like I'm going out. I've committed to the day, but I did it, right? I walked in, I wore the heels, it's over. Now I can just sit like I do. This is what I can't help but think. You in a throne room with a giant fat slug of a... <laughs> All that's missing is a metal bikini, and, no, man. No, no, and that, that chain. Yes. Because the best thing about that scene, and people ask me now all the time, no, and they've asked me for years, are you sick of talking about it? And I've always said, no, 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 no. Now I am sick of it. <laughs> but uh, it's official. But right. uh, I will anyway. Um, no, the thing that was good about that scene was I got to strangle him, and they literally gave me the option. They said, you know, do you want to strangle Jabba, or do you want us to, you know, throw in like some? There was a woman running around that was wearing the same outfit. We were the double knit twins. <laughs> uh, and I was, are you kidding? I so badly want to kill this thing. I I've never. <laughs> and it is something normally you'd be able to step on. Gone too big. Right. I got to saw that f***er's <laughs> head off. <laughs> Yes. No, it was made out of some terrible thing. So I really, really enjoyed it. And if you see it, you'll see you're just really loving it. It was great. When I was a kid, uh, up until 12, 13, I, had, I picked very specific trilogy posters that always featured uh, Princess Leia. I had Empire Strikes Back sheets that had Princess Leia on them. And at night, when I, I had the, right next to my bed, I'm not even lying, and you might remember, there were, you had signed uh, photographs that said, Galactically Yours, Carrie Fisher, in a frame right next to my bed. So before I went to bed, I kissed all four posters, kissed the frame. I hate to tell you what I did with the sheets. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it was that you were the one that I wanted to marry. I was like, oh, to grow up and marry Carrie Fisher. Not Princess Leia. Like, I wasn't these fools that was just like, I want to marry a fictional character. I wanted to marry the real deal. I was like, she with Paul Simon, I got a chance, you know? <laughs> Can I ask you this, man? Uh, you, uh, uh, so we talk about Star Wars, of course, and whatnot, but you uh, were in another movie of mine, which was a huge favorite growing up, and you worked with a guy who was uh, an idol, my guy I absolutely loved. You were in the Blues Brothers with John Belushi. Yeah. Um, yeah, big time. Uh, you had the curl up and die hair salon. Uh, it, it, you know, you were trying to take Jake Blues out the whole time. He has that wonderful monologue. It was an earthquake, flood, I, I swear to God. What was he like? Was he cool to hang out with? You were oh. friends with him before the movie and stuff? Well, we were the similar types. So uh, we, together it was, you know, it was too many village idiots spoil the village. Uh, <laughs> but he just, uh, you know, he was, he was Peck's bad boy. You know, he just, they called him, uh, I think it was Danny that called him uh, the, the, uh, the deep hole in space or the black hole. I mean, anything that got near John, he inhaled, whether it was, uh, well, drugs, food, women, anything, you know, it was just, and when we did the Blues Brothers, most of the um, extras were policemen. Oh my God. So I literally, and I had never taken LSD before, and uh, <laughs> so. Not even when you were killing Jabba? Because that would have been amazing. Well, wait, Blues Brothers was between the two because John wanted 
he would call and say, please ask George to get Danny and I to be in another, you know, the bar scene where they had, you know, like they did in the first He wanted movie. to be in Star Wars? He wanted to be in, he thought Empire would have another scene where there would be the, you know, whatever that was. <laughs> right, right, right. Begging me to get him in there. And I literally did go to George, you know, they want to come and be in the, you know, like there was just going to be. And so John, and yeah, John loved, I guess, loved Star Wait, and so Wars. so Lucas was like, no way, not those guys? John, John was not some, somebody you could just kind of throw into a scene. He was a focus puller. You were going to look at John wherever he was. And anyway, so John was the one that, there was a blues bar right. everywhere we went, and there was Patty, the girl that cleaned the fish tank and had, had the mescaline. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, it was insane. That was a job then? It was, was a job, yeah. Gig. And the great union, great medical. No. <laughs> uh, so I have no, and so somehow we took acid, and I thought, well, they're extras. So that they were cops. <laughs> so I'm on acid, in, and there's like 400 policemen. If you remember all the scenes. And yeah, yeah, constantly. They've been chased at yes. the whole end of the movie. So I think a lot of, and, and Danny, of course, was friends with the DA, and he'd say, look at this scotch bottle. They removed this from a woman earlier in the week. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I did more movies with guns and dwarves and midgets than anyone. <laughs> in the world. You would have been at home at tonight's movie. We went and saw Snow White and the Huntsman, and as I was sitting there watching, I was just like, all right, kick-ass princess. I've seen it before. <laughs> you, you were the prototype. You were the first female heroine. You hear from a lot of uh, women my generation, younger and whatnot, who saw the flick at the time. They were like, that was the first female who kicked ass. First chick in the lead who had a gun and was like, you're a little short for a storm. You were into the garbage bin. Like, you just <laughs> took charge. You were insulting men. And I went looking for a woman like you. Found my wife. She's the same way. She's like, get in the garbage bin. You're well, too good, short. Then. That's Stuff good. like that. Uh, if I wasn't married, would you marry me? Yes, I would. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Carrie Fisher! Yeah!